I haven't seen a lesbian wear so many vests and still pretend to be straight <laughs> for so long. <laughs> and that's so wrong. <laughs> Mr. So wrong. wrong. My name is Carl. My name is Oscar. And this, and this is, is Who, Who Would, would watch, watch This. this. Welcome to Who Would Watch This, the podcast where we watch awful, terrible films and try and figure out who would watch this. Today we're talking about Mr. Wrong. The movie currently has a 3.9 on IMDb, a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 1.8 on Letterbox. 1.8 on Letterbox. Oscar, what's the cute little plot of this little gem of a film? A single and lonely woman finds a seemingly perfect man to date, but soon regrets it when his deranged and possessive other personality emerges. And worse still, she cannot convince anyone else his Jekyll and Hyde true nature. Ellen is the, uh, the woman. <laughs> Just in case you heard the plot yeah. and thought, oh, is Ellen playing Mr. Wrong? <laughs> It'd be a bold move in 1993. <laughs> <laughs> also, from the plot synopsis, I thought it was Ellen falls in love with Split. Yeah. But it's not that. No, it's I went, not. Oh, he's just an awful yeah, person. I, I, that's it, the it, it, it's, it starts sort of like, oh, maybe he's perfect. And it's like, no, he's not perfect. It opens with him being quite visibly a creep. Mm, that's and right. we're meant to believe that he's somewhat, well, maybe we can trust him. It's like, no, we cannot. <laughs> we absolutely cannot. All right, Oscar, but before we get any further in dissing this movie, uh, let's rewind and see what we thought last week. Who would watch this movie before we've even seen it? All right, Carl, so next week we're doing Mr. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Ellen DeGeneres and a man. I know very little. Do you know much? I don't know much. I feel like we're going to be... Given the circumstance around Ellen... Do we th- Circumstances. What's she done? Oh, she's she's a host now. She came out as lesbian. Oh. Yeah, really good, bold move. Is and Porsche I, okay? Yeah, Porsche's doing well. Oh, great. Yeah, and I think that's the only hot news that's happened in the last 20 years. Yeah. You know, I met somebody genuinely named Porsche the other day. Really? Yeah, so I feel like this is that's this movie's for her. For, the, for her. Who's, who'd watch this? I've never Carl's met a Porsche in real Porsche. life. Yeah, I know. Well, was it a car? Sorry? No, it was... I thought you were saying Carl. And I was like, <laughs> this is the thing that always happens with my name. I always respond to people talking about cars. I'm always like, yes, you're talking about me. And they're like, this is a fucking car yard. Why are you here? <laughs> Carl, hello. <laughs> this is where I get the most attention. And this is where I'm happy. Okay? <laughs> who would watch this? People who get mistaken for cars and Porsche. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I definitely think this movie is for my friend of a friend, <laughs> Porsche, based on... <laughs> <laughs> the fact Ellen's in it. What do we think the rough plot's going to be? <laughs> no no clue, but if it's got this bad of a rating, I bet not taste- I bet not tasteful. No. Is he going to be bad? Oh, I think it's going to be... Is I he going to be bad? I hope it's... I feel like there's... I feel like when I had a little look at like the director writer or something, there was a little bit of talent okay. thrown behind it. Right. I may be wrong from that memory when I was adding this to the schedule, but... All right, let's... Um, but I think, you know... It could be a cat in the hat scenario because Alec Berg did cat in the hat, right? Yes. Could be a could be a cat in the hat scenario. Yeah. You never know. All right. Well, this is this. this well, is who the... do you think? Who? Because I'm saying I think it's for my friend of a friend named Portia. <laughs> who do you think it's for? I hate doing this. Do we collectively <laughs> think of something and then you throw it onto me? Like, so what do you think? Like you? Like I didn't like help you come up with that. Uh, who would watch this? Not fucking Portia. How about that? It's a disagreement this episode. <laughs> I don't think any who would watch who wouldn't watch is Porsche and everyone else would watch Mr. Wrong. I like the idea of the whole episode's you throwing out a point, me going, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, and just us constantly disagreeing for the sake of it, for the sake of a great dynamic. Oh god, boy do we just sound young and gorgeous back oh then god. last week. You know what? I think we're oh. in love. I know. Pre hernia. <laughs> And we're off to the start. (laughs) Let's go with Mr. Wrong. How do we start this film? How do we start this film? Oh, God. God. uh, We start it with what I think is terrific, terrific music. Pulled pulled from whatever the year of the movie is. (laughs) 1993. Oh, God. Look, is it that old? It's that old. God. It's before she was a lesbian. (laughs) Because it has to be. And, like, we, we should just immediately discuss that Ellen's a lesbian. 
Is she playing? Is she? I assume that Porsche. <laughs> no. Okay. So this, she, I don't know how Ellen is at acting, but she's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not ignoring. We can't establish there's a painting in this room. Let's establish that there's a painting in the room. Oscar, what have I just done? Uh, Carl's pointed at a painting of Finding Nemo and God, well, she's pretty good on Finding you, you Dory's Dory. on it. Yeah. Who, who, who voices Dory? It's Ellen. The lesbian. Ellen who? <laughs> DeGeneres. Ellen did not so generous. <laughs> oh, she's so not generous with her wealth or stuff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> who are we to say she's not generous with her wealth? We don't know. We don't know her. She doesn't fund this podcast and that's why it's a no. I mean, if Ellen suddenly pumped money into it, would the... Would it improve? No. No. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe there'd be less lesbian gags. <laughs> Just know that we're not making fun of lesbians. We're making fun of Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, we're progressing. Being a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, of course, if you're listening at home and you haven't seen this movie yet, I sure, I'm sure I'm 100 percent sure you know where this film is starting. Yes, it's starting in a Mexican prison. <laughs> the logical place for any rom com to begin. Oh yeah. Ellen DeGeneres is dressed in a in a full bride gown. Full ball gown. And she's killed a man, apparently. Mm-hmm. That's the beginning of the cute little rom-com, apparently. It's the classic, like, rec- record scratch. Well, yeah. <laughs> I bet you're wondering how I got here. But I don't know about you, Carl. I didn't want to wonder. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't care. care. I was like, oh, I hope this movie's a silent movie. The soundtrack just keeps playing. It's a great soundtrack. It's like... Boop, boop, doop, doop, the soundtrack doop, doop, doop. is disgusting. What are you on? Sorry, it is the worst music. It's like that. It is that. You've literally nailed it. Isn't it good? That's basically what we want for our theme tune. So why don't you shut up? It's fine it for our theme tune of an amateur podcast for an uh, uh, two un- amateur <laughs> amateur. Listen to this audio quality. Where are we? Where the do you space think we station. Are? There's a fucking painting of we're in the studio that did the voice recording of all of Finding Nemo. That's where there's that's where there's a painting. We're recording at Pixar on. Studios, are we? <laughs> anyway, so it's a story within a story. I've decided. Oop! I already want to not watch this entire film very quickly. Minutes in. Music's great, though. Oscar, take it away. Okay, so she's been interrogated. Um, <laughs> flashback, she's at a wedding. Oh, she is. But not her. She's at her sister's wedding, and she's getting married. She's 26. Ellen, I think, is 30 in this film. Mm. She's bummed out because everyone's going, why aren't you getting married, huh? Why mm. aren't you getting married? Um, during, during the bride and groom speech... The parents decide, this is a big moment for our youngest daughter, I'm going to talk over it (laughs) and slander my eldest daughter about how she's not the one getting married and miss the entire moment. (laughs) I was like, how fucking rude. How rude. These are awful parents. They're awful parents. And everyone around her is an awful person, really. Yeah, and I bet you probably picked up on the same note that I did. (laughs) Which is, there's one too many shot of people cheersing. I, yeah, you know what? It's you're right because I feel like the editing and this. Everybody uh, cheers, yeah. Yeah. and then it cuts to extras. Cheer a bit yes, later, yes. cheersing, and it's and it's odd. <laughs> I feel like this film they just didn't film. They filmed eighty percent of it because there's a lot of shots of that mm. just sort of get thrown in there, added in, just like we need a transition. We didn't get a transition. Yeah. Cheers for three minutes. I see know. what happens. I like I like to think it's because Alan was improving too much. <laughs> With what? <laughs> Sorry, um, the uh, no, cheersing. She just did like a nine-minute bit on cheersing, and then they went, "Oh no, she doesn't even cheers a glass in her bit." Oh, we're gonna have to cut the whole thing. Get an insert shot of some people cheersing. It was a three and a half hour movie. <laughs> like, well, all this improv doesn't make sense. I like the idea that Ellen's just like, "Oh man, if they released the director's cut of this, you people would be watching." You guys classic. be wrong you- about Mister Wrong. <laughs> Apparently she makes fun of this movie a bit on her show, because this was her first starring role in a film. Gotcha. It bombed so oh, her much. Her show being the Ellen show. The no, oh, like the not oh, the, the Ellen show, like but her Ellen, the show. sitcom thing. I don't know. One of the one or the other. Yeah. Uh, who's that upstairs? <laughs> Fucking come down if you got something to say. <laughs> a gag only works if the microphone picked up the noise. <laughs> It won't. It's so soundproof in here. Oh, God, it's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, so Ellen DeGeneres, 
Constantly there's people coming up going, don't worry, darling, you'll be next. Mm. Um, she goes, that's the 37th person to tell me that. Who the fuck are these 37 This people? wedding, should we say, is about 50 people, so... <laughs> <laughs> 78 of the party has gone let's that see that gross yucky girl we Mm. need to get her married they basically looked over and they went i'll see the parents talking through their daughter's (laughs) speech right now we should go and prod her too (laughs) who wears a vest to a wedding (laughs) what is she a lesbian (laughs) no she's not she's straight because you're trying to find mr wrong (laughs) dude was it her choice to wear a vest that's what I thought. Because it's a costume designer. I've got a lot on vests in this <laughs> because I and we should invest into this story I'm about to tell. The <laughs> the I'm gonna cut this bit. So go, <laughs> this vest bit, nigga. One. I wonder how drastically the difference is when I cut an episode and you cut an episode. Like, is mine way more unfunny? Because I'm just like every bit can stay, <laughs> and you're like gonna get rid of this i'm so insecure so i'm just like i'll cut it down it's like well we got 23 (laughs) minutes of a podcast i guess that'll do i love the for one once i just want to edit you out completely and you listen organically and you're like it's just got talking to himself (laughs) do you go back and re-record your like my bits (laughs) no it's just an instant it's just half a conversation (laughs) It's like listening to the setup and or punchline of every joke and you just don't know the other half. Yeah, but do you reckon she came up with a character design or there was a wardrobe designer that went, we're going to chuck her in a lot of vests? I feel... Okay. Were vests sexy in the 90s? That's never been said before, <laughs> that well, sentence. But you, you're you right. But then she has... No, no, because... did she? Well, well, here's the thing. She always kind of wore those kind of outfits, though. Yeah. Even when she wasn't out. So maybe they just kind of were like, well, let's not change her, like, appearance, like, that much? Mm. Well, um... Oh, God, who's the actress on Seinfeld? Uh, Julie... Julia Lewis-Dreyfus? Yeah. I, I don't pronounce that right, yeah. but yeah, but... Yes. Um, yeah, her name's just being a blank to me, but I feel like... Elaine it, from... Yeah, yeah Elaine, yeah. yeah. I feel like Elaine wears a lot of vests in Seinfeld, so I don't know if vests were just in. I get, oh, yeah, maybe, actually, but it's it's a weird, like... Was it kind of the sort of not un? But was it just like the common, the common female outfit? <laughs> was I don't know what. I'm convinced it was any movie production in LA during that time. Was like it's cheaper if you cut the sleeves off. That's money saved. <laughs> tax write off. <laughs> Sle- you would not believe the tax on sleeves. <laughs> Get I, them off. I'm telling you, there's a bunch of women walking around LA in sleeves and nothing else on themselves. It's the new look. Friends had a lot of sleeves. Uh, not sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of love yeah, vests. <laughs> they were under the the, the, yeah. the production office. <laughs> they just I'm caught all of the Hells, ones yes, from sleeve. Seinfeld. Joe, are you going to be eating tonight? <laughs> oh, God. The actors have requested a million dollars an episode. What are we going to cut the budget from? The wardrobe, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so she's with her, at the wedding with her best friend mm. who works... She works at a TV company. Talk they make, show. Yeah, yeah, talk show news. Basically what her show would be come yes. in real life. Which is quite smart, isn't it, Carl? It's almost like synergy. <laughs> it's like she knew. It's like globalization. <laughs> don't just drop words. It's like she knew. <laughs> don't, don't just drop words and go, well, that'll It's work. like responsibility. It's like she just knew. Hymen. <laughs> it's like... Redonkulous. You know, it's in the public sphere, and I it's think in, the rhetoric around in, this discourse is pretty powerful. It's in Albert sphere. Don't do the German, what the <laughs> German Nazi architect. And uh, Hitler, in fact, was inside of him, apparently. So that's where we're at. I'm glad we was the Hitler gay bit because it ties back into <laughs> Mr. Wrong. Because you know what, Hitler, <laughs> Hitler was Mr. Wrong. Hitler was gay. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Hitler was a lesbian. Is he gay and that's wrong, or am I? Hmm. Mm. I guess we're. So what we've done is we've offended almost every single person. <laughs> Cools so is like a ballistic X vs. Silver episode again. <laughs> Oh, oh no. we're back on it. Anyway, she's got a creepy <laughs> man whose name's Walter who works at the TV company. What do we think of Walter when he's introduced to us as a character? Do you say he's a creepy man? I think he's quite what? creepy. The one that's like doing all of her work, f- f- doing all the work for her. Yeah. The intern. I guess so, yeah. Nowhere near as creepy as the woman that gets flowers and is just like cutting them. Yes. And is staring at her and being like, ah, you'll find a husband. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> people in this film are so are either lonely nothings mm. or in a relationship and insane. Oh, I know, right? Because <laughs> they, yeah. So also, I kept on thinking. So the so the person that you're labeling a creep, I can't yeah. remember the character's his name. name is well, his name is Walter. So you, Walter, you, yeah. So that this is acted by the younger brother of Ron Livingston, and I love Ron Livingston. Thoughts on Ron Livingston? I don't know who that man is. Oh, he's in like Conjuring, Mindy Project, Office Space. The Conjuring? What's he in the Conjuring? He's the dad in the Conjuring. Isn't that Patrick something? No, that's the. He, that's the conjur, conjurer. Conjurer did. It's the conjurer. No, he's the dad. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga come to help the family. I I don't know this person. Ron Livingston, have you not seen Office Space? No, I haven't. Really? We've, we've discussed this on the podcast. I need to keep going. How have you not watched it yet? Because, because quite we frankly... We brought Office Space up in the Cat in the Hat episode. <laughs> How have you... That was the second or third episode <laughs> we did. Been How half a it? year and I'm going, I'm not it's doing it. It's been six months. <laughs> Don't you want to see Jennifer Aniston before Friends or a handful <laughs> of people before their success? Um... So a whole workspace gets in- introduced. Yes. And I just kept writing down, what an unfunny film. Yeah. They, there's so often we're watching these films and I'm writing down the plot and I'm writing down notes and I forget it's meant to be a comedy. Right. And it's it's just, it's like, what the fuck is this then? I know. I'm kind of watching them and I'm like, that's a weird dramatic beat. And I'm like, oh no, that's a comedic beat, I guess. Yeah. The, her house is huge, by the way. It is. Con- she's like, I'm a... <laughs> Honestly, I don't think she needs a man. She's like, I'm a single person she's, working a fantastic she's job. She's killing it. Yeah. The last thing she needs is a man. Yeah. She's considering where her character ends up at the end of the film. I, it's quite sad. Yeah. Anyway, so she goes out on a date. Yes. She goes out on a date. The date doesn't go well. No. She comes home. And this is where... This is what I thought was insane. She watches some TV. Yeah. She goes out again. Yeah. Imagine having that sort of energy. She Do goes, you have that? Well, like, but it's weird, though, because she does, like, this weird montage of, like, watching TV, and now I'm lying on TV, and now I'm upside down watching TV. It's really, TV. yeah, 90s, isn't it? It's and such a... Like, and every weird. channel's, like, people making out. Yeah. It's, it's a weird gag. It's so, like, it's like parody. It's so lazy that but it's parodied. I just think it's insane that you go out on a date at, like, 7.30. And it's a bad date. Yeah, it's a bad date. You come back at 10. But what's her plan after she goes out on the date? Because she goes back to the bar. But what's her plan at the bar? Because she has a martini yeah. with, with three olives. Mm. There's a, there's a, there's, sorry, you're right. With the glasses shot. There's a shot of olives. Yeah. That lingers for like three seconds. Yeah. I'm like, three olives. That will I reckon this back. person has a glass fetish. Probably, actually. It's like Quentin Tarantino of glass. <laughs> <laughs> what a title. I know, right? Is it M. Night Shyamalan? Is there a twist? <laughs> no, he directed a movie called Glass. That's comedy, right? That's there. comedy. That's a pun. Shattered glass. What other glass films are there? Looking f- Alice and Wonderland looking through, through the, the looking, looking glass. glass. Oh, oh, the bit has it. finished. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, wrap it up. I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna start ripping wires. Out. Oh god. Okay. So, but I don't understand why you would. So she's gone a date at seven thirty. Yeah. Come back at like ten. Yeah. Watch TV for an hour. Going back out at eleven. Yeah. To an empty bar. Oh god! I any and drinks are so stupid. Any time I've been on a date, I'm fucking exhausted <laughs> afterwards. Absolutely exhausted. I've had to be like on. Yeah. I've had to be on for. Do you know? Do you know what it's like to be on? It's like me now, but worse. For two hours, I come back. I'm drained. <laughs> I have no energy left in me. Luckily, we can do 40 of these podcasts because, I mean, we're effortlessly shit <laughs> at this. So it's so we easy. Are. I'm beginning to realise why nobody ever came back with me after a date. <laughs> Having Cause... listened to this, I went, oh, it's just like a podcast. It's like a one-sided podcast. <laughs> oh, but I just kind of, by like, you get back by 10. They've rejected you by like 10.01. Yeah. You're in bed. You're in bed. It's... Yeah. Watch some TV. Yeah, drink ha- at home. I don't know why she didn't drink at home. Having some Ridlin. Okay, anyway. So she went out on a long day. Yeah. We're introduced. <laughs> this man. Mm. I can't stress to you how he speaks. <laughs> he speaks like he's just eaten a pack of cigarettes and hasn't coughed in a year. <laughs> it looks like this. And he's so dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, are you loathsome? <laughs> 
Which is a, a really uncomfortable thing to ask someone. Yeah, so because she, she goes to play, like, the most depressing song on the jukebox, mm. drops her penny, yeah. goes, like, fumbling around the box, and he just goes, walks, almost straddles her as she's on the ground. He's yeah. like, let me play a song to get you in the mood. <laughs> He's stifling a cough. <laughs> Want to have a coffee at 11.30 at night? <laughs> He's like, I gotta get back for us. <laughs> Don't worry. Um. <laughs> but then the, you, I, I, they go to have a coffee, and I thought they were going to go to like a diner. They just sit down at the next table and order a yeah, coffee. Yeah, it's like they definitely couldn't afford another location. Yeah, they were like, well, I got this coffee here. It's a restaurant. <laughs> the, the director was reading through the script, and they went, there's a secondary location <laughs> in this scene. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Pull up a table. This, <laughs> this, this bar's becoming a diner. You gotta sell coffee? Not now. You do. We've got espresso martinis. No. Put Extra- it in a mug. <laughs> yeah, put it in a mug. <laughs> you know those fancy little shavings you put over the top and you just grind them into a filter or <laughs> run some hot water through it. Then charge me a nickel. <laughs> it's the 90s. We're wearing vests. <laughs> Um, God, anyway, so it was at this point in time that I found out, because I was so bored, I started researching the movie. Yeah. Uh, that Ellen DeGeneres was on epi- one on Ellen DeGeneres was on one episode of Joey. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Have you ever seen Joey? No. Do you reckon it's as bad as people say? I don't think so. I think... It's directed I think... by David Schwimmer. Surely it's good. Yeah, he did Come Fly, fly with, me. with Me. And Run Fat Boy Run. Mm. I think that's a pretty... Okay, rom com. I think Fat Boy Rum. <laughs> fat Boy Slim. <laughs> slim ba- ba- Fat Boy Rum. Yes, slim go on. Fat Boy Rum, rum is also a terrifically okay film. I think so too. It's the ideal amount of average that you want in a rom com. Oh, it's sappy. It's what you need. It's I know. Like I Hank could be Azari is in it. Oh, he plays a ma- a, a great villain. I he think. does. He's just had some fake hair put in. It looks great on him. <laughs> So yeah, they get this coffee, they're like, well, should we go to a dancing ball? And the guy's like, a third fucking location? No, you're going to dance <laughs> right here in the restaurant. The other patrons are not going to look at you, and you're going to do a little jig. And that, and now you're in love, I assume. I can only imagine the executives in their viewing room watching the dailies are like, hey, okay, so, I don't know, who, whoever directed the movie, hey, John, um, so why haven't they left this room? <laughs> It's been an hour. Why are so many people cheersing? <laughs> it's been nine minutes of cheersing and then being like, are we going to go home? And then she curls up in the corner <laughs> and goes to sleep. Her work is literally just behind the bar. Why are you refusing to leave this location, John? I John, ju- what's wrong? <laughs> I just think it's how the film should be. And I think you're a coward for not letting me make this film. John, i got to tell you. You gotta stop jacking off into all of our glasses. <laughs> I go to use a glass, I put some water in it, and I'm like, "Why is it chunky? Have a sip, semen." We try to give them coffee. It already had creamer in it. <laughs> you gotta stop coming in Ellen's glasses. Stop coming in all of these glasses on set. Everybody's complaining. We might have to. There's a reason we had to get Ron Livingston's younger brother in, because Ron Livingston left. He was livid. So he was. <laughs> Oh, okay. So we so we've already been so Ellen's been schmoozled yeah by the three locations in one. Yeah. And they're like, let's go back to my house. And and this is the movie going, he's a the perfect guy. Mm. They should all be attracted to Bill Pullman, apparently. Of all <laughs> fucking people. Bill Pullman, the president from Independence Day. Are you fucking kidding me, the nineties? Take Bill Pullman back. Yeah. Idiots. Is he playing this? Because I saw some reviews, and it's strange. It was all ones, and then there's a bunch that are like selectively like, I love him here. I love him. <laughs> He's the greatest thing that's holding this glue together. Is he playing this character right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say he's playing it wrong? <laughs> and what was the suffix before his name? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wrong. <laughs> the- <laughs> okay, so then we immediately are meant to think he's the guy's the perfect guy. I think this is genuinely the worst thing he does in this entire film. One, he's an investor. That's fine. That's your job. Two, he writes poetry. Carl, do you think these two worlds 
have ever had the cross of arts and financial investing. Because <laughs> I don't think any financial advisor should write poetry. I don't think any poet should go into finance. So then why is this poetry, understandably, so shit? You didn't cry? You didn't fucking cry. Are you no, telling me? No, no, I didn't. The second he said, I write poetry and I'm a financial advisor, I then wrote a poem, <laughs> a haiku, that I was like, if this is better than what he says, then I'm then yeah, I'm better than him. Sure. I'll give you a little excerpt. Yeah, please. I invest in stocks. Stock taking my love for you. Invest in Ellen. Was that better than whatever Bill just said? I think you could definitely become a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's back and forth. It's back and forth. My word. <laughs> oh god. I don't what do you what have you what have you seen Bill Pullman in? Uh Independence Day and just around. <laughs> like <laughs> Isn't I could, he always kind of around? Yeah, he's in the he's the he's I feel like he's always the not even pre, like, president. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Just that kind of person in the film that's not the antagonist, but just kind of a a block for a bit. I'm convinced that if you had just asked me who the president was during the 90s, I would have just been like, oh, Bill Holman is. And I, I would have been like, no, no, not on television. And I went, television? What are you talking about? He was in a film called Mr. Wrong, 1993. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres is in it. She's not a lesbian. Um, oh, yeah. So I was just trying to think about something that I really like him in as of late. Yeah. He is terrific in this movie, uh, in this television miniseries called The Sinner. Now, I cannot speak for seasons two and three, which I think have mediocre reviews. Yeah. But season one is phenomenal. How come? What's the, what's the general... Uh, so it's just like a woman is at the beach. Mm-hmm. She's chilling. Something sets her off. Suddenly, she stabs a man to death. Wild. Um, Bill Pullman comes in to like investigate, and then it's these two tangents that span over kind of like two decades, um, and just the unfolding of this mystery. Uh, mm-hmm. It's this normal mother. She's had a breakdown. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why it triggered her. But during a point in her life, she went missing for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Her sister also died at one stage too. It's just all of these little places clicking together. It's like a six-part miniseries. And it's like if America actually pulled off doing a BBC miniseries. And then they went, wow, that was great. Let's make nine seasons. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it, is it, did it conclude in the first season? So, like, enough of a resolution? Well, they don't. It's only his character gotcha. goes to different cases. Yes. So it's just like his character is in different... Kind of like a true detective. Like, yeah. Not, 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 like, not true detective. Yeah, but like, like each, each, each season's like its a own Poirot. mystery. <laughs> Like a Poirot. Like a Miss Marple. It's like a Marple, if you if you dare say. Marvel's Marple? <laughs> it's like the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, but oh. I really very much cannot recommend The Sinner. Like, he's great in it. Yeah. I think he got nominated for it. Oh, good. Um, and I know it also got nominated for, I think, best, like, miniseries that year, when they didn't think it was going to have more seasons. Gotcha. So, go it, and go him. He's great in it. Uh, what do we think of him in this? I... His character is insanely, like, over-attached, right? Yeah. He's playing it bad, but then also, like, it's a bad... Like, I don't know. He's just... Yeah. He's just... Like, I'm uncomfortable when he's on screen, so mm. I guess tick. But I was, there, I was the most I was uncomfortable when he was, like, meant to be sane, the perfect man. Yeah. I think, he, I think he's miscast. Yeah. I just don't think he pulls off being, like, crazy. I think you need younger, almost. Mm. I feel like he was older than Ellen. I don't think he was, but I felt like he was. Oh, like, if he was a younger person he, than Ellen, it would... I like... think he needs... Like, he needed to have more of, like, a... I think a boyish type of look to him. Yeah. Or, like, a charm to him. Because I think Bull, Bill Pullman looks like he's been through shit. Yeah. <laughs> and looks like he's weathered and not up yeah. for this kind of shit. So it's just, like... someone that's, like, enthusiastic. Like, and... I didn't believe him when he was all together and I didn't believe him when he was falling apart yeah so I don't know who it's for no um what do you think of Ellen DeGeneres so far oh okay she um the biggest thing that I didn't like in this film is they try and go for this uh like that no one believes her angle I know which always upsets me yeah I get really upset when people don't believe other people in movies and, and, I'm nor- like, but and I know the truth yeah and normally that works like you get that sort of feeling of come on guys but then I'm like 
there's so much evidence and it's not established throughout the film and then suddenly she's like why does no one believe me it's like what do you mean no one believes you like they should anyway i think she's she's yeah not right for this no <laughs> no. no i don't think she is i don't but also i don't know who who's who would be good in it i think it could again i still think like i think you need more of like an actress because here's yeah. the thing i don't think the movie it's like her character's so comedic you need to get a comedian yeah which she would be at this point yeah like she's not an established actress she's a comedian yeah like i feel like if you had simply just put in but the, she's like she was like a 90s tv actor like i know again like i feel like the friends actors on friends are perfect for what that is yeah but in terms of like a movie emotional payoff they wouldn't work like that I think they have, as actors, have like transferred, or some have, yeah. have transferred <laughs> into those sort of films Not and can do that. Have. Not all of them have. No. But yeah. <laughs> Melvin. So, where's he at? Huh? 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 He's in Madagascar. Good. Um, yeah, I think you just, yeah, I think you need like an actress. Because yeah. I don't think she pulls off the actual actress no. kind of parts of it. When she needs to be crying and upset and stuff. I'd, however, having said that, I do think she's quite good as Dory. So she's clearly got like a talent for voice acting. Yeah, I guess. I'll give you that. I think. Fi- I. Th- however, I will say this: I think Finding Dory, when the focus was on her, but I, I think mean, it crumbled a little bit. That's the issue of putting the focus on a secondary character yeah. that shouldn't have had the focus on her. Yeah, I don't think that's a testament to her, like voice Abilities, acting. Yeah. Like I, I think for the longest, for the longest time, I didn't know it was Ellen DeGeneres. I'll give you that. Yeah. Same. So. She just transformed into. Oh, she is Dory to me. (laughs) That's who she is. That's simply who she is. Um, Should we? Can we? Because such a little happens. He gets introduced to the family and stuff. Yeah. I don't know what more that you want to say about that. If you have anything, stop me or forever hold your peace. So suddenly she gets a phone call. Yes. What is this? <laughs> it's like suddenly, it's like a full zoom I of a horror film. Genuinely, like, I liked it. It doesn't work or fit, but it's this kind of like she's drinking juice. Yeah. And she spills the juice and it's like blood and it like, like, psycho spins around to the blood. It doesn't. And yeah. Then it, and then it dissolves into like a red bus. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. No clue why it's in this film. It's, yeah, it's really bizarre. It's this really tense angry phone call that ends on the sweetest little bye yeah <laughs> it's just like i'm gonna get you and i'm gonna cut you all right bye anyway <laughs> bye. but who is the voice behind this because i'll say this right now i love this actress so much <laughs> she's phenomenal what's she best used in school of rock i do like i do like her in school of rock I saw her in Shameless. I can't she's stop watching Shameless. Shameless. I think Love she's really good in that. I think it's a shame she left the show. Did she leave the show? I only been. Well, her character only gets this. I think she's only in the first two or three seasons. Nice. But she's great in Shameless. Yeah. Love her in Shameless. What have I seen her in? Yeah, she's Jess in Toy Story, and I just think she's. Meh. She's so fun, and she's just fun in interviews. She like, is. She's just. She's just a lovely soul. She doesn't. She just like exude like, just such a nice. Energy. excited yeah and like, she's very funny i think yeah she's always charismatic and fun and stuff yeah i yeah she is just great what she what do you think of her in this okay i will i i think again i like i love her performance in other things i think it's trend like it's jumped i think given this character because who is this character is the ex-wife of uh bill's character do we know his name mm, mr. mr wrong mr wrong <laughs> and she is this psycho crazy woman who has i i you not know, fuck it, i love their characters it's it's her with her current husband mm. who is like a gal- bloody sweetheart yeah a bloody <laughs> sweetheart they're like oh we just we have to kill like he's like well, well she wants to kill him so we're gonna have to kill you <laughs> i think i love their dynamic genuinely and they're only in it for like two three minutes yeah i think barely, they yeah. were the this film is still shit but like their little bit was just like ah I like it. I know. It didn't make me emote, but I definitely looked at it and went, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. <laughs> I like the sword dynamic. He was, they were very funny. It was, yeah. Again, didn't make me laugh. I was mm. just like, ah, something. Because I think the, the writer of um, Time Travel, Bill and Ted? No. Yeah, Bill and Ted's Excellent yeah. Adventure. Yeah, yeah, wrote this. Mm. So there's like, there's a, there's a potential. Yeah, there is potential. Um, 
the anyway, so she starts going back to her office. Uh, Mr. Wrong starts to give her really great things and presents. Yes, lots of presents. This, this office is obsessed with flowers. It's fucking weird. Yeah. She's I, like, oh, are you getting married? And the other intern's like, oh, hot, you got a ton of flowers. And I'm like, the fuck is this? It was the 90s. No one could send an instant message. So you had to, like, send, like, I don't know, a letter. But so many flowers. So many flowers. So I many would flowers. be, I think, I mean, we're not females, am I right? But... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know I feel like I'd be pretty insecure if I had like just flowers on my desk I'd be like I think flowers are nice I think they're nice don't get me wrong what about some potpourri oh well now you've got my soul <laughs> now you've got me Carl somebody sent me some potpourri I'd be like oh People are going to be like, oh, Carl, your desk at the office smells fucking great. <laughs> Guys, this is a good way to integrate uh, social interaction. If you want to send some Carl some pulpery, <laughs> send us an email with a picture attached. It's not even about s- social interaction. It's a great tip for if you're up and coming in the workspace. Uh, <laughs> if people think that you're a bit stanky or they don't want to be around you, uh, line your desk drawers with pulpery. And people will keep on wanting to come up and chat with you because you're the nicest smelling section of the office. We do have to legally say we are sponsored by Popery, though. We are sponsored by Popery. Uh, Popery Popes, I believe is what they're called. Uh, PPP. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> PCP. Uh, <laughs> We're on PCP. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where Oscar and I tell you that we are on PCP. Uh, but we also are sponsored by Popery for Popes. Um, you can get it shipped to you for four ninety nine in a Pope's hat. Uh, it comes with a free child. Uh, Smash cut to the rest of the film that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after she, uh, so she doesn't bring up this phone call to him, which really I think is weird. No. Right? It's not, did I miss that? Where she's like, hey, I got a wild phone call. Well, because they don't interact. Yeah. I never they, see they, they go on this date at the start, and I yeah. don't think... They, they talk again. 90 oh, minutes of poetry in the middle. God, it works. <laughs> <laughs> what a choice. <laughs> okay, well, they go... So then she gets this call, and then they, do they go to his mum's house? For a, like... Yeah, they go... God, has that happened? Oh, no, it hasn't happened yet. No. Um, What what happens is uh, he meets her parents, and, he, and she's like, you should act more like yourself. Yeah. Which sets him off. Yes. And he decides, cool, now I'm going to act crazy, and forces her uh, to steal some stuff. Yes, they go to, like, a convenience store. So they go into a convenience store. They have this little exchange where they, you know, they steal a can of soda, I think. I think it's beer or something. Or beer, and she's like, puts it in his jacket, and he puts it in her jacket, and she puts it in his jacket, and he puts it in her jacket. And then... Are you laughing yet? (laughs) It's pretty funny. (laughs) Um, Then... They go up... To the, oh, no, they're at the cashier. Mm. They've also got some other items. Yeah. Right. And Bill Pullman pays for them with a pretty big note and then says, keep the change. So really, he's just paid for the thing that they're stealing. Exactly. Because he's given them such a big note. It's probably overpaid, if anything. It's a $100 bill. I looked at it. <laughs> It's a thousand dollar bill, yeah. which America had in the nineties. <laughs> Those investor. <laughs> I know. Otherwise, what were they going to s- snort cocaine through? Than a thousand dollar bill. <laughs> no, a big sleeve, <laughs> a giant sleeve, <laughs> a mannequin sock. <laughs> Just drilling a hole from the big toe all the way up to the shin on a mannequin. And sniffing it up through that. God, that piece of me was hitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. You're going to have to sniff some potpourri to try and get over it. <laughs> to mellow us down. <laughs> no. Somebody light a scented candle, please. Where's our intern? Light a I'm scented on candle. Bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so they steal the beer. The the clerk is like, I'm going to like kill you. Even he though, pulls out a shotgun. Yeah. It's a wild thing. Ellen DeGeneres then doesn't know how to get into a car, which is she, the she, 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 she steps in both legs. Yeah. It's Could like have a opened the door. It's a convertible. Could have opened the and door. And her butt's kind of hanging out. Yeah. And the guy, like, very almost misses her. Yeah. And it's it's the most... Like, she could have opened the door. She could have opened the this door. Is the, this is the worst way to hop into a car. Yeah, it was like legs first, arms... And forget about your center of gra- yeah. like gravity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she was unaware she had a middle. <laughs> she was like, okay, I've got my legs, I've got my arms like and my head. My boots and my <laughs> sleeveless vest are in. I don't know what else I can have. <laughs> 
She's like, protect the vest! <laughs> Bill, protect the vest! <laughs> this is the vest Aladdin wore. Um, and so after this, he gets a new car. I don't know why he changes his cars. And this is when he goes to the mum. So uh, is are we meant to believe he's stealing cars? I feel like there's a lot that's been cut in this because there's also this like running gag. Every time Ellen goes home and there's presents, there's a woman in the background of her house who's like on looking. And like every single time she's there and she, there's like more women and more women, they're just overlooking her. And I think it cuts before they go into this bit. So I think a lot of this has been cut because there's a lot of gags that don't make sense mm. unless they fucked up and got the wrong car and they had to just ad lib did you get a new car yes i'm not really sure but yeah it doesn't go anywhere they go to the mums i'm convinced i'm convinced because uh the producers got so upset the director refused to leave a location he Mm. went fine but we'll change his car (laughs) every fucking scene will that make you happy will that give you variety why would that make us happy john (laughs) continuity wise oh well fuck it then we're going we're we're, we're the mums we're the mums you know what would make us happy john stop coming in the glasses (laughs) like we told you to nearly three weeks ago there's a gallon in the in the car why did you come in the car i'm into cars now i got 40 cars full of glass shards of glass oh oh light a candle i think i'm made peeking (laughs) So he, so the mother inspects her when they rock up, and she's like, "Yeah, I got great, great birth and hips." Yeah, a wild accusation to yeah. make. Um, so then we have, and this is this is what I think you're alluring to, which is a like, why is this a joke? Why does this make sense? Does this yeah. lead to anything? Mm. So one, I don't think we even need to meet the mum. We don't need it. Yeah, we know the, we the mum never it. really pays off. Too. No. What is this charades bit? I don't know because again, there's a lot of elements in the scene yeah. that felt like there's cut. There's a there's a there's a like a not a nurse a like a, a maid yeah. that's in the scene but doesn't get a single line. It's kind of like cut from the shot. Anyway, they're playing charades. She gets like a I'm not sure what she gets. Like a president? Is he oh no, a, she got Madame Bovary. That's or right. Like that. And they do the you charade. Read that? Sorry, have you read that? I've Have never read, read that it? in uni. No, oh. is it good? I've got a copy. It's highlighted all the way through it. Oh, I'd love to read it. I highlighted all the bits I hated. <laughs> so it's a drenched yellow book. It's drenched, <laughs> drenched in highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they do the charades bit. He doesn't get it, and she's like, "Oh, you didn't get it." The that's the scene. M- and that's the scene. It's got that music though. It's like do 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 like it's that you know famous piece of orchestral music yes. though that's like chaos is beginning to ensue yes. tensions are beginning to rise is it the the bumble the the something of the bumblebees yeah yeah yeah, like yeah, yeah 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 it's something like that yeah uh, you know, used in comedic movies before it can work and so it can work but it, all it does is i assume from an editing standpoint when this scene needs some <laughs> energy like just needs some momentum because if it's imagine if it was like silence. silent It'd be a very black because the room's it's massive. The shuffling of her being yeah. like okay, so two, yeah, two, two words, two words, two words. First word, yeah. Um, muff, muffin, no. Second word, okay, yeah. You ready? Yeah. Uh, washing, uh, no, uh, 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 washing hands, rubbing hands, r- r- rans, rans, and ran, and ran. Slapping the... It's fucking potpourri. It's your sponsor. Oh, what do you expect it to be? With PPE, you can get yourself a real <laughs> nice smell in your closet. In your closet. <laughs> in your closet. <laughs> Where Ellen is. You in 1993. St- you got a stinky dick. Why not <laughs> shove it in your underwear for work too? She'll love it. She'll be like, hey, why does your penis smell like a dried up garden? <laughs> All right. What happens now? The le- <laughs> the le- <laughs> so just... What happens what now? What happens now? Where do we go from I, I'm here? I'm reading, like, my notes. I'm going, what the fuck? She actually? tries to break up with him. Yes. So good on her for immediately being like, you're kooky, your mum's weird, <laughs> I don't know why you made me do charades for half the movie. <laughs> I'm going to break up with you. He doesn't understand. She explains it to him like a child mm. and is like, this is salt, <laughs> this is pepper, we don't go together. <laughs> and I sat there the entire scene looking at them being like, why is there hot sauce? 
Why is there a bottle of hot sauce and you're not going to introduce the hot sauce into the analogy? Also, what a waste of the also, hot sauce. Also, let me just... I think in literally every single household, salt and pepper does go together. It's mm. so synonymous together. It is the like epitome of two pears. That mm. are, like, it's when you go, what's a great pear? Salt and pepper. Sure and sunny. But it's just like classics. I know. It's like, she might as well have just been like, okay, these are two things that don't together. Here, pretend your pepper... And I'm a queef. <laughs> Try and make them go together, Bill Pullman. You can't. <laughs> you can't, can you? Unless you put pepper in your vagina. You go, <laughs> oh, you've done it, haven't Cut. you? <laughs> you've done it, haven't you? It's also a fun way to keep the uh, <laughs> vagina smelling nice if you do some pulpery up there. <laughs> Just <laughs> 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 right out of there. Uh, so he doesn't understand that it's a breakup. Yeah. Which makes you think oh, he's very ill. Yeah. Um. So he's like, I'm gonna prove that I love you. I'm gonna break my finger. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he breaks his finger. I think this is a concept that could be funny, but isn't. I think so. It's very dark. It's pretty dark. Yeah. Because I think this is marketed as a dark comedy. I know, but it's also it's it is dark in places, but doesn't have like a you the know, constant dark. Tone. Yeah. Doesn't have like what in Bruges or Seven Psychopaths. Yeah, has. Or, you know, any of those more. I feel like only British can pull off a dark comedy. Yeah, I don't They I know how to do dry. I can't think of an American dark comedy that really works. Yeah. I think because they keep adding these like sort of fun elements to it and it's like, no, that can't really work. Well, also, just American humour in general is more broad. Yeah. Whereas English and I think Australia, or maybe. Australia's very sarcastic. Yeah. I think Canada does it really well. Yeah, Canada knows what's up. That's yeah. why Canada likes a lot of Australian content. Mm. So Go us. Yeah, look at us go. Um, anyway, so this so she comes home. Yeah. J- John Cusack's there. Yes. Uh what does Joan Cusack do to her? She ties her up, puts gum in her hair, and they're like, Alright, we're done here. No, they rip her couch. Oh it's yeah. the most important thing where she's like, rip her couch. <laughs> And he walks up and he just starts to undo stitches. It's pretty funny. I don't know. No, again, 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 again. I can't, I can't, I can't stress enough. It's not funny, but when the bar's so low, it's like, ah, that was something. Okay, so they break up, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, Cause Joe, I, cause think... Joe, I love it because Ellen's like, I don't want to date him. And yeah. Joe, it's so, probably her best acting. Yeah. I think I so believe it. She's like, I'm done with him yeah <laughs> you can fucking have him it's the most like believable it's her going i don't fucking want him she's like hey i get you harassing me but not interested not interested and during cues that's like yeah you're not interested in mr wrong <laughs> so then he starts trying to win her affections back yeah uh one of the things that he gives her is a shirt yeah. with his face on it saying he wants to be close to uh her heart mm-hmm. and then an arrow drawn to a heart and this shirt Looks like it's about an XXXL, <laughs> which I think is the most offensive thing to send us. You might as well have sent her a blanket. It looked huge. Took her about a minute to unravel it. <laughs> and then she was just like, oh no, I'm just entangled in this. I'm in a tent. I'm in a circus tent on my fa- on Bill's face. <laughs> the what? intern walked in and was just like getting through all the fabric and was like, so what's this? <laughs> this is new. <laughs> oh, come on. My suit came on the shirt. This tenty shirt. Oh, but it does mean that we do get to go to uh, my favourite part of the film because it not only doesn't make any sense, but it's also terrifying. <laughs> she decides to hide out at her mum's. What does he do? Okay, before we do this, yeah. we should establish, because I wrote it down, I've crossed it out because it comes back. There's a bit at the start where she goes, hey, there was this one time, <laughs> It's at, like it's not meant to, I don't know if it's meant to be funny, but she goes, a clown came to my house and it was for the next door neighbors, but the clown came, and it was the best day of my life. That's the est- that's that's the. When's est- that said? It's so when they're like dating and doing poetry. It's such a throwaway line. Is like, it that's, in the poem? It might be. Yeah, it's just. Is that him that says that? It's very. It's he's very like, he does it, and he's like, "Oh, I thought I would like this." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that happens. So now she's at her mum's. He dresses up as a clown on like ten foot tall, like. Uh, stilts. Oh, but but explain the fact that to her, she's on the second story. Mm. We don't know this, that she's on the second story. Yeah. He's there tapping at the window. Yeah. It cuts to a wide of his super 
super long, thin legs in pants, yeah. a story high. It is easily one of the most terrifying frames of a film I've ever seen. It's I was startled. I, I, did, I, was, I did. I did think it was. I thought it was good in that way of terrifying. Oh, oh my heart! I, I literally went. She's in danger. Yeah, she's in. I was horrified. This was the scariest thing ever done with a clown. Take that, it. Yeah. Okay. And it too. Yeah. And I like the it movies, but this was horrifying. It's pretty terrifying. I've never seen any. I've never seen th- this director should do a horror film about stilts. He <laughs> nail it. <laughs> well, because then she goes, "Go away!" So like candidly. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Okay." He just kind of falls back. Yeah, and there's a, and there's a shot of him on the ground with the stilts. I wouldn't, again, I don't really want to give the film credit, but, like, there's something there. There's so many films where you're like, oh, there's there's something here. I don't really want to want to have it to be a thing. Like, I think, say you give this to Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Yes. They get to do, like, a rewrite and then shoot it. Yeah. Surely it would be close to a pass. I think so. Saying that, though, I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast, but I watched their, like... The film, variety like, one? Yeah. The, yeah. That was bad. It's not their, their fault, though. No, but I think... Was I their bit good? I couldn't tell it was their bit. There was one bit that I was like, eh, but, like, again, it's very... They're on a roll at the moment, Yeah, so. but I absolutely adore them. Yeah. Everything they've done. And that's why I watched that. I was like, eh, you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Um, so anyway, she's like, okay, well, this is a step too far. Yeah. You're, you, you, this is you're, a still too far. <laughs> <laughs> you, I think it's fucked up if you hire stilts. <laughs> if you're just if you're just, period <laughs> generally oh, if you're trying to be so much taller you can mm. I think fall yeah you should <laughs> do you uh, I don't know if you had these like in primary school or something the, the bucket ones the little bucket ones yeah I remember like we had them to play on and somebody was like Carl do you want to use these and I flat out went no I'm not a pervert <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I think that there's definitely like, I mean it feeds into my fear of heights, no I don't want to be three inches off the ground with little pieces of plastic underneath me, but if you're into stilts, like fuck you you're all awful horrifying thing who, what ten foot clown raped you as a child? Sorry, well the you... stilt went right up me <laughs> <laughs> all ten feet baby I took it all Oh, there's so much I need to cut. <laughs> <laughs> the still gag's good. You leave the still gag. Fuck it, I'm keeping everything in. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. Not into the stilts, I'll tell you right now. No, that's fair enough. And I think there's a Malcolm in the Middle episode where he's like a... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Scary episode. Scary episode. I think there's a lot to, that could be done with, like, haunted stilts. But here's the problem. Let me, hey, let me get my voice memo for it. <laughs> Carl, remember to write three and a half hour screenplay about haunted stilts. Kenneth Branagh could be in it. If that fucker was on stilts, I'd <laughs> scream. <laughs> Can you imagine it's Tennant, but he's just on stilts the entire time? I'm going I should... backwards. <laughs> I'm going backwards on stilts, baby. Christopher, why have you chosen this? Well, my friend John told me you could just come in glasses and we'll make a movie. So fucking stilts or Kenneth. <laughs> uh, okay there's... choose between stilts and secondary locations you can't have both <laughs> in a film I'm telling you now oh god anyway so um, uh, she gets a private eye the private eye doesn't really do anything she goes to work yeah somebody's basically sabotaged her job yes this is when like the plot of another film that did it better would be like oh it's real cause the I thought it was sad. <laughs> this is sad. I thought it was sad because... I felt bad for her. I felt bad for her, but I was like, this hasn't really been established. I was just like, this came out of nowhere. Mm. So he's like, hey, you sent me this memo that said, fuck the bodybuilder, he's got a small penis. You sent it to the, this this beauty person saying that she's nothing. Like, he's like yeah. very... <laughs> like... But the, they reveal it by they're just being monkeys loose. Which I think is just like a wild way yeah. to do the reveal. Because it's set up earlier that they're, they're not great with monkeys. But also, like, then don't open up the monkey cage in the office. Also, why should a film establish they're not good with monkeys? Who's good with monkeys? <laughs> who's... who's? <laughs> I know. If a monkey was loose in this studio, 
We wouldn't be good. We don't really establish. We wouldn't fucking come in here. Oh, no. Oh, do you know what? My monkey will rip your dick You know who, who would come in here? John. <laughs> On the monkey. He would. He'd be like, hey, is that... <laughs> it's a glass monkey? I don't know. I don't know what the gag is for that. <laughs> it works. It works. Keep it in. Oh, God. Uh, so, then she's like, cool. My, my job's ruined. Yeah. I'm go uh, the I'm kind of getting gaslit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to um go to my parents. Yeah. She goes back to her parents. Her parents uh have don't want to stop a cab. No. For her. No. Just, There's the meters running. She has to run like it's Terminator Two. Yeah. The parents <laughs> tell her, <laughs> "We're going on a cruise. Your boyfriend booked it for us. Bye." Like yeah, I thought it, are the parents gonna get killed. Yeah. I, that's what I thought they were I, leading to. I'm yeah. Like, oh, no. I don't, I don't like this at all. She then turns very crazy and is like, I'm just going to swim to fucking Mexico then. Yeah. Um, then she walks out. Her private eye has also been bought out by him. Yes. Why does he have so much money? Oh, it establishes that he has a lot of money. I don't, I don't I think know. He says he gets a big paycheck. Yeah, doing... He's a private... I don't know. Invest, he's invest... I don't know. He's got yeah. money. He's got yeah. money. That's the plot. It's it's strange. Yeah, the PI does immediately. She gets they, hit by a car. Yes, because she's so crazy. And I thought this was this was the only time in the movie that I thought it was mildly amusing. She gets hit by a car. Somebody comes out with a giant bouquet of flowers, and the private eye goes, "Oh, they're for her," and points to her unconscious <laughs> body on the ground. And then it's like a spin shot. Yeah. And it transforms, <laughs> and she's in hospital watching over for suicide watch. Right. Yeah. Really, just so now she's basically being told she's crazy. This is basically the movie The Invisible Man. Yeah, which I I, have you seen that? I well, have not seen it. Well, yet. the concept's like basically, I've, people, uh, yeah, I've yeah. Seen it, yeah, yeah. It's like, and it's really insidious because you're so worried for her. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the same thing where, like, once she gets the medal asylum, you're like, she's not fucking crazy. I'm like, I get really into movies where they're gaslighting people. Yeah, I know, I love. Film like that. I feel like there's. Uh, have you seen American? I feel like we keep just doing. You know, you've seen this, but anyway, have you seen the second season of American Horror Story? Yeah. When she's stuck in the mental asylum. Yeah. I yeah. love that vibe. Yeah. Just, I love that. I don't know. Just like you're trapped in here. Mm. Everyone like, is against you, and you're trying to work your way out. I love. I love when um she breaks out and spoiler alert when yeah. Zachary Quinto turns out to be the killer. Oh god. Um and she turns on the light, and it's a tit. Yeah. Fuck, it's good. Oh god, that's good filmmaking. That's good filmmaking. Uh, go Ryan. I know. She, so she she breaks out of the hospital, right? I know. And then t- whose car does she go into after she's broken out? Oh god, it's like she's like, oh thank you, this mystery person. She's in Joan's car with her boyfriend. Yeah, like the um, which is like such sad luck. I was so sad for her. I, I feel like you're you're painting it like this film deserves this sad moment. It doesn't deserve a sad moment. Why well, it doesn't ha- earn any sad. It's me being like, because the film keeps on being like, enjoy this. Isn't it wild? <laughs> and I'm going, I'm sad. <laughs> I'm very Everything sad. you're doing it's... makes me sad. But not for like the film's intention. It's just that this is sad. If yeah. they were trying to go for it, they wouldn't get it. But yes, go on. Yeah. Um. So anyway, the basically, um, <laughs> she gets taken out. And almost like she's going to be sacrificed. Yeah, she goes to pretty she's... much the end of Seven, where there are all those, like, telegraph pot yeah. pylons. She's nailed down to concrete. Yeah. And they're going to sacrifice her. I can't believe I'm saying this. They pour honey on her and go, we're the ants. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was quite fun. I hated this. You hated this? Oh, it was yeah, too I broad. Think... I was like, fucking hell. I can't imagine writing this down. This would be funny. <laughs> like, I, I, uh, it's not my sense of humor. <laughs> because they're like, oh, I didn't feed the ants. You want the ants hungry. I but... feel like it's funny in conversation. I can imagine you pitching and you're like, I'm going to put put what we're but, talking yeah, about to, wor- like, to words. Thing. Everything we've ever said in this podcast. Oh, it's of that level. Yeah, of you that level. You just don't film that, we wouldn't, But we wouldn't go, let's write this down. Mm. Spend money on it. Yeah. Get actors involved. Yeah. None of the, no. I said, what I'm saying is none of these jokes are worth your time or effort. Oh, I know, right? But if you want to act out our episode, yeah, I think give it a go. Yeah. The anyway, so Joan gets shot. <laughs> oh, the the film jumps. Yeah. So, yeah. So is it Bill that saves her? Yeah. Bill shoots her. Yeah. In uh, the arm. Saves her. 
They fuck off. Yeah. He takes her to an RV. Yeah, I can't... This film suddenly just jumps. Yeah. So in now like, he's got another car. Yeah, he's in an RV. There's, there's little Mexican kids in the back. Do they explain where he got them from? No. They have guns. Yes, they have guns. <laughs> well, I don't... And they're into the plan. Yes. Why? What, uh, we're going to try and find that out right now. I have no clue. I don't know, because they are very much like, shut up, Ellen, you're going to marry this man who's our father. Yeah. he's kind of pretending that they're his kids, but they're not his kids. Yeah. It's weird. And they're like, shut up, mother. Is and it it's just, like, has he brainwashed like, them? But it's like, but it's, is it funny? Uh, no, it really made me even more uncomfortable. These kids shouldn't have guns. I think yeah. the only reason they turned into squirter guns is because somebody went... That's wildly inter- inappropriate. Yeah. Who gave the kids guns? Yeah. Oh, no, they're loaded. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so she then breaks... Well, she doesn't break free. She goes into a bathroom and finds a phone to call yeah. for help. And she calls Walter. She calls Ron Livingston's younger brother. Who is then like, you're going to have to speak louder. Yeah, he lives over a plane I know. path. But it annoyed me because he couldn't... He could have just gone inside. Yeah, he was on the balcony. Over a Turn chest. around two steps, you're inside, buddy. Yeah. Ellen's begging for her life. Yeah. She then goes back to like this like little pit stop. Bill then drugs her. Uh, yeah. She's drugged for 30 seconds. She goes a bit loopy. And then she goes out. Why was this here? Yeah. I don't know. I was... Anyway, they're getting married. It's a shock. So now it's, yeah, all it's tied. just like suddenly it's they're getting married. Back. I think this is so lazy. Like yeah. constantly when this film is like, oh, wow, this is where we're going to end up. It's going to be a crazy ride. And normally it's like a, it's like a twist at the end. Yeah. Whereas this was just kind of like ticking off little things. Like we're in Mexico. Here's the wedding dress. You know? Yeah. I'm like. So anyway, the, uh, so the parents are there. Mm-hmm. The kids are walking down the... Because she doesn't know they're squirter guns. She's yeah. going to walk down the aisle at gunpoint. Yeah. Suddenly, Ron Livingston's younger brother runs in with a gun. Yes. He's got... Why did he... So... But we were led to believe he didn't hear what she was talking about and didn't believe her. Yeah. Why does he come all the way to Mexico? Insane. How does he get a gun? Quickly, too. How does he get... She, she says, get a gun. She's like, buy a gun. He's like, I can't hear <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so then he runs down the al- the altar. Trips. Trips. <laughs> the gun flies in the air. Ellen grabs why are, it. Why are his laces untied I've, to begin I've, with? I've, there's so many things that are like, wrong with yeah. this. I, I just don't... I, is it just so... It's like they wrote the ending first. Yeah. Wrote the film and then went, how do we get from there? We've got... Stilts. We get, we get, we've got seven minutes. <laughs> Can you get from stilts yeah, to Mexican yeah, wedding? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, anyway. So, yeah. So, she ends up, what we believe, shooting him. Yes. So, very drastic all of a sudden. She's yeah. now killed Mr. Wrong. Yeah. The police... We Oh, it goes back. We're now in present day. Yes. The police are like, cool. So, you admit guilt. <laughs> They're, like, um, making a murdering of her, like, yeah. super quickly. Uh, and I'm like, this is a dark ending. Yeah. Because she's getting pushed into the back of the police car. Yeah. In a uh, wedding dress. Yeah. But then... This dark comedy flips um, it on its head. Oh, they know how to do it, twist. Do they? No. no. Uh, <laughs> uh, turns out young ro- younger brother of Ron Livingston is driving the car. Yeah. He's broken Ellen out because yeah. he slashed the policeman's side. And yeah. it's revealed yes. that Joan Cusack, with a bullet wound, mm. has snipered. Sh- snipered Mr. Wrong. And, like, I think it's Billy Madison... Yeah, has that does this. This was the like I didn't love Billy Madison, but it was the one gag I loved. And they try and Steve kind of Buscemi. do that. <laughs> Steve Buscemi shoots him and gives him the thumbs up. It's like that moment, yeah. but it doesn't work. It's also such a dark gag in yeah. Billy Madison. I mean, yeah, because he calls up and apologizes and he like crosses up <laughs> like to kill list. I think that the that that fi- I don't love that film, but that gag yeah. alone deserves the whole film. Um, so then I went. Joan Cusack shot him in the head. Wild. Well, this is terrible. That's the credits. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Uh, they literally right after the sunset. They kind of do this like, man, we're running off. Turn the it sunset. off immediately. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's wrapping up. Yeah. Gone. Well, then you miss the end credit. The the, oh, the fuck end, off. Not end credits, but just like the title card at the end. Uh-huh. It was just like Ellen and Walter get married. Jonah stuff are good. 
Mr. Wrong's alive oh. and he's on a boat oh. sailing around the world oh, looking for did... the one, one true love. I think because they went, fuck, he died? That's a bit dark. <laughs> but he deserved to die. Yeah. If you ask me, he deserved to die. <laughs> yeah, I think the film, it does. And then he's like, no, nah, he's on a boat, he's happy. Oh, it's God. very strange. All right, I'm just going to ask the question. Oscar, who would watch this? Oh, I didn't even say. Have you seen Ellen's comedy special? No, I haven't. I've seen an ad for it and I went, that's not for me. <laughs> it's it's not that the jokes are bad. Yeah. There is, I genuinely think the audience is on meth. Watch it just for the audience. They are laughing over the top of everything. The punchline, mm. the setup, just her like just... Dancing. Just, just kind of dancing. She's groovy. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, it's a disgusting little cult. So, with that said, I I genuinely don't think that insane cult would watch this and like this. Yeah. So I don't know who would watch this, really. I don't know who... Because I remember reading that these two, when it came out, they were both TV stars. And yeah. I was like, put them in a movie, see what happens. Yeah. Didn't work. Like, I guess... I guess if you hate Ellen DeGeneres, you might enjoy her going through so much pain. Yeah, I guess so. I guess Dakota Johnson probably... <laughs> Dakota should... Johnson probably loves this. Oh, she loves Mr. Wrong. Um, I uh, If you've ever watched a Tarantino film and thought that it should be worse... <laughs> it's very... It's a bit it is Kill kinda, Billy. It is Esky. Kill Billy, and it kept on occurring to me. I like the word... I like the adjective Kill Billy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of got like you could take stills from it and like kind of do like and be like, <laughs> that's a fun game. Yeah, is this from Mr. Wrong or Kill, Kill Bill? Bill. And you're like, mm. I don't know. Is that the bride or is that Ellen in a dress? <laughs> <laughs> is that Uma Thurman or Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> uh, I also think if you're a big fan of Ron Livingston but you dislike his face and want to see it look a little different. Well, that was for me. Yeah. Because I've gone out of my way to erase his face from my... Which is an awful thing for you to do to Ron Livingston. Well, it's why I may watch this film. <laughs> I know. I would love to find out that I've pronounced his name wrong the entire time. Because <laughs> I've given so much merit to Ron. You know, it's Ran, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ran Lavinston. <laughs> what are you... What are you... Uh, what's, uh, the Who are the... Press, it's the press, there! Yeah. <laughs> I'm Ron Lavingston. What, what is that like? Because I do that voice news in my people. personal life. It's the... <laughs> it's like newsy. Yeah, see? Yeah, you see? Ah, yeah, yeah, you see? Yeah, it's a guy. Yeah. I you have 30 this. cigarettes telling me that you're going to bootleg some stilts for me. Put it on the horses. <laughs> put it on red. Put it on... <laughs> anyway, who uh. would watch this... <laughs> I've said my theory. You've got to say one. I've said it. I don't think the cult of Ellen would watch this, so I don't know who would watch this. I think you're right. If you want Ellen tortured, but you don't feel like sad for her because the film's saying so, you just feel sad because Ellen, one is has to act straight when she clearly does not want to act straight. And I think she was about to come out. So she's like, I guess I'll make this and get out she's of She's like, it. I'll do it, but I'm not going to change yeah. from what I wake up in to what I get to set in. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. All right, then. Well, have you got a palate cleanser? Oh, yeah. I watched Crank. Have you seen Crank? I have seen Crank. What do you think of Crank? Cause I, I think remember what I haven't seen it in probably eight years. It's very fun. It's like 85 minutes. Yeah. Just you... Jason Statham. The whole plot is that he... His heart is... Dark, like, is like he's given Chinese poison... And if his heart goes under a certain... It's like speed, but on meth. Because he has to keep his heart rate up. Yeah. And it's just... It's fun. Have you seen the second one, second one yet? I have not seen the second mm. one. Because I was, I was like, oh, he dies... Spoilers. He dies at the end. Because he falls out of a plane. Yeah. And that's why he made a second one. So I don't, mm. does it... It's pretty funny. Um, He falls out of a plane. And when he's lying there, someone comes up with defibrillators. <laughs> just... <laughs> just <back laughs> and he just like, gets back up. Is he... And it's straight back into it? It's straight back into it. The, I remember liking both. I think they're both fun, if I recall. Um, and I was really excited because those two directors did Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah, and I the went, oh, they'll make a fucking... Neville and... Something like that. Yeah, yeah, Neville, Dean and Taylor. That's it, I yes. Think. Um, fuck, crazy, that's... You've got that. <laughs> something was, in the was, back of my I, mind. I said I Neville, of... <laughs> And you went, oh, got it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I was like, oh, them with Nicolas Cage yeah. as a lead. And that movie's such a shame. <laughs> Is that the one where he transforms into, like, the goat? I've yeah. just seen that, like, little clip. Yeah. Not good. I think they muted down what should have been, like, an R-rated film into, like, a, yeah. yeah. Awful movie. Both of the Ghost Rider movies. Awful. Maybe we'll review them. <laughs> Maybe we will. Um, what did you watch, Carl? Watch up a little palate cleanser. Oh, God. I watched uh, a new movie that is available on Apple TV+, Plus, which I think is their big awards contender for animated film called Wolf Walkers. Mm. I've heard about this. Yeah. What, what do you think? Really enjoyed it. Thought it was terrific. Thought it was like Studio Ghibli without, you know, it being a Studio Ghibli. Mm-hmm. Also, I think... Um, Plot wise, it's a good plot in terms of something that I didn't consider, which is like the movie revolves around back in the day, land farmland needed to expand because that's what created supplies and money. Mm-hmm. They couldn't expand because there were trees everywhere. Mm-hmm. Tree loggers couldn't cut down trees because they kept getting killed by the wolves in the forest. Mm-hmm. So it's a movie that is about people having to go out and kill the wolves in the forest mm-hmm. and a girl that befriends somebody that's like. A wolf walker, so nice. half wolf, half like a half a girl. Yeah, um, and this is very cute and pleasant and sweet. And this, I mean, that's pretty insane because what? Because even though Disney has like a monopoly on winning the animated Oscar, yeah, would it have any chance against? No, it has no Sol. chance against Soul. <laughs> <laughs> Not even with Apple really pushing, because that's a pretty big thing for them to win. No, nah, Soul's too good. Soul's got it. Yeah, Soul's far- <laughs> Soul. <laughs> Soul made me, God, sad for about my life. Oh, nice. So, very reflective. It's like, hey, it's all right to not achieve anything. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, kind of. It's like, yeah, I've, it's I've like been... pursue the things that you want, but know that your pursuit should be what fulfills you. Yeah. Not the end goal. Try, not the fact that you either got there or didn't get there. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh. I remember my dad turning me afterwards and my dad going, I enjoyed it. Don't know if a kid would sit through it. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> that's my. Well, I mean, like it's smart because here's the thing: the Pixar, Pixar film. Pixar know yeah. who's watching their films. Yeah, people that watch Toy Story four, kids may have watched it, but it was all the twenty something people that grew up on it and go, "Well, fuck, I want to cry." Yeah, it would give you something to cry about. And they go, "Well, we won't make a kids film. We'll just make something for you." Yeah, <laughs> and the fact that they go, "Well, most of our audience are twenty five they're probably trying and not going to succeed. <laughs> Let's give them a film about that. <laughs> All right, Oscar. So next week we're going to be watching The Hottie and The Naughty uh, as we continue to do our rom-com month for Valentine's Day. Love that. Uh, and if you want to pick the film that we review, just email us or if you've got a question, email us at askwwwtpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, next month's theme is bad superheroes uh, movies so send us some stinkers to feast our little eyes on thank you for listening thank you for listening and goodbye bye